Welcome back to another episode of the Testudo Talk podcast. I'm Emmett Siegel, as always, here with Andrew Chodis. Andrew, the last time we saw Maryland football was in Columbus against Ohio State, their first loss of the season. They're now 5-1. and one. The good news is they get to return home. It's homecoming week. They're playing Illinois, which is a team that's struggling. First off, how are you doing today? I know it's been a couple of days since we uh, since we got back from Columbus. How did you feel the day after we did that late night drive? I know I was super tired on that Sunday. Uh, how did you enjoy the trip to Columbus in the, in the, in the drive back? It was great. I, I think I woke up at like 4 p.m. the, the next day, kind of right. <laughs> everything excited. No, no, but no, no, that, 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 that was a great trip. And I think, I think Maryland football, I think they learned a lot about themselves um, that game. I think, you know, it was kind of their, their first time dealing with any sort of adversity. And, and, and they made a lot of self-inflicted mistakes that they're going to need to learn from. And I think the next three games where they have, which kind of prevents some winnable, which provides some winnable opportunities. I think it's going to be really telling to see if Maryland can kind of stay the course. Yeah, and they're going to have a good opportunity to do it this week. We looked at this game against Illinois, maybe at the beginning of the season, as, as one of those toss-up games. Um, if you're Maryland, you cannot lose this game anymore. Uh, they're two touchdown favorites. Illinois has not yet to win a Big Ten game. Uh, Illinois just kind of looks like a, a bit of a disaster right now. And, and you know, Maryland, even though it just suffered its first losses. Still, you know, considered to be one of the better teams in the Big Ten. Um, this is definitely a game that, that you can't afford to lose. But but like you said, with, with the Ohio State game where you kind of let it linger a bit, um, I think Tuesday's press conference with Mike Loxley was one of the more really, interesting ones really we've had. Telling. We've yeah. had this uh, this season where Mike Loxley was, you know, he's been very introspective this season, I felt like. And that was definitely on display on Tuesday where he's talking about, um, you know, the loss lingered for him a bit. He had a lot of regrets. He regretted not kicking a field goal in the first quarter and instead going for it. Um, he was getting really specific. He said they had a coaches meeting, um, which is normally stuff that you would hear from a team that maybe is in a bit of a free fall. This was after Maryland's first loss, which, you know, I, I know that Ohio State is is a game that you want to win um, because it was such a big opportunity and they had that game. But but it was it was really telling just to to see how high the expectations really are internally and that they're not bluffing, that they really think they can win every game that, you know, when they lose to Ohio State, they ended up losing them by 20 points that they're sitting there, you know, the day after the game, two days, three days after the game, you know, still thinking about it as opposed to that next week mentality that we normally see from them. Yeah, no, and I think you you say exactly right. And I think it's all about when you, when you suffer a loss like that, where obviously you have such a great opportunity and it's it's really right there for you, right? And, and you kind of lose yourself and the better team ultimately prevails in the end. But it's all about moving on, right? It's it's You're still five and one you have a really good chance to improve to six and one and it's not looking back and it's not looking ahead. Right. And it's focusing, focusing on this week and you, you, you know, you face off against an Illinois team that's really struggled this season um, has fared well below expectations as has the whole big 10 West. Really. It's kind of a dumpster fire o- over there to be, um to be frank, but yeah, you know, coming home, homecoming, a game that you need to win. I mean, You've in past years, this you kind of look at the six win plateau. It's like, you know, come on, bowl eligibility. Now, this is like it's kind of that's kind of just the floor, but that's another component, right? You they have the ability to become bowl eligible for the for the quickest first for the oh, wow, for the fastest time since 2003, I believe. Or it's I, I don't have it off the top of my head, but that yeah. sounds that's sounds it's, right. it's 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 in a very long time, so I think that kind of says you know the direction of the program where they kind of want to be and there's i think there's some deeper meaning to a to, to a potential win this week yeah well let's talk about this week um and and like the team is doing let, let's put ohio state behind us um <laughs> illinois <laughs> is uh it's two and four they're zero and three in the big 10 like yeah. you said this this team has, has fared well below expectations and last year we saw them competing for uh big 10 west championship they didn't quite get over that hump but you know they, they were in the mix i think I saw at this point last year they were on a six game win streak, um, yeah. or something five game win streak, something like that. Um, they're two and four in their first six. Um, have not been impressive at all, and this offense that they have is a bit anemic, frankly. I mean, they're averaging. Um, I have it written down here. I think it's thirteen points in conference games, which is not going to cut it. Um, Illinois, you know, Brett Bielema looked like he had a lot of positive momentum with last year's team. Obviously, you know, we we found out that you know that, that defense was absolutely loaded. Um, that defense had had Devin Witherspoon, who was like a top five pick in the NFL. Uh, Quan Martin was drafted in the second round. Like that, that defense was was great. They were super physical, Brett Bielema esque team that you saw at Wisconsin. You saw kind of what he what he tried to do at Arkansas. Um, but but Illinois is just it, they're not that kind of team this year. 
nothing's really working for them. Um, they don't have the defensive pressure that they had last year and their secondary is very young. Um, so Andrew, when you, when you look at this Illinois team, does anything stand out to you in, in terms of positives, in terms of negatives? What do you see when you look at the Illini? Well, I think going way back when we, when we initially previewed, like I think the entire season for Maryland, I think we circled Illinois as a team that they're, they're battle tested, right? They, they, they play really hard. They have, they have a, a stingy defense. And like you said, kind of everything's gone wrong to an extent this, this year, right? You still haven't been able to achieve a win in big 10 play. They rank near the bottom of the conference in almost every major statistical category, total offense, they're second to last. And the offense as a whole has just been horrific, you know, to, 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 to put it nicely. Um, I don't know total, if that was a nice. I don't know if that's a nice way to put it. <laughs> it's it's been really really poor. Um, right. And 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 total defense, they're last in the conference as well. It's just it's just on on all, on both sides of the ball, they have they haven't been able to get anything going. You, you and you and also you look at their schedule as well. Games against Purdue and Nebraska. The Purdue game, they get blown out, forty four to nineteen. That's not what you usually see from an Illinois team, right? We think of Illinois. No way. Usually think of a team that keeps it close, kind of grinds its way through games. And then they host Nebraska. Offense does absolutely nothing. They lose 20, 20 to 7 there. One of their wins against FAU, they barely scrap by. It's just, it's been a really tough season for Illinois. They're a team that doesn't have a lot going for them. And it just, it's, it kind of feels like you kind of have to imagine they're coming into this Maryland game just on a really low note. And it seems like Maryland has to take advantage of that. Yeah. Like I kind of alluded to, um, a second ago, what what stands out to me about this Illinois team that that kind of surprised me the most is the fact that their running game is not good. And this is a Brett Bielema team. And when you yeah. think of Brett Bielema, you think of you know Big Ten football. You know, uh, pound the ball on the ground. You know, run the ball down the other team's throats. And you know they've they've had a lot of running back injuries. Um, I think of their top three running backs in spring ball, um, only one has played this year, and he Reggie Love. He's he's suffering nursing an injury right now he might not even play on saturday um and there are other two running backs that are playing have a combined 30 career carries between the two so they don't it's not like they're you know getting a, a lot of production from from the running back position you know despite having a star but even so like this offensive line isn't that good they've been getting beat pretty frequently um maryland's defensive front which looked all right against ohio state at least early um mm-hmm. should have an ability to you know plug those gaps and, and stop the run um, and then Luke Altmaier, at quarterback, has not really worked that transition from from Ole Miss. I mean, he wasn't starting at Ole Miss, but that transition from the SEC to the Big Ten has not treated him too well. Um, they do have one solid player that that I want to point out uh, on offense, Isaiah Williams, their wide receiver. He currently leads the Big Ten in both receptions and receiving yards. So um, definitely the kind of guy you got to keep an eye on. But other than that, I mean. Illinois' offense is not impressive. It's the kind of offense that, like I said, they're only averaging 13 points per game in conference competition. So, um, you know, th- this is this is the type of game where you would expect Maryland's defense, like you saw in the first half against Ohio State, where they don't allow an offensive touchdown. You would hope that maybe they can carry that part of the game as opposed to the second half where, where it kind of got away from them. You would hope that they can carry that success into this game against Illinois. Yeah, I mean, you you look at the Ohio State game and Maryland's defense. You know, they played well early on, and then the game kind of kind you know kind of wore out. But they weren't able to get you know that key takeaway right that uh, that they had been able to to get in the first five games of the season. And when you look at Illinois offense, that's struggling. That's struggling deeply. And you know, Luke Altmaier, he has he has eight interceptions on the season. It just it kind of looks to be shaping up. For a game where Maryland's defense that was so strong in turning the ball over early in the season, we'll be able to do that again against against the Illini. Yeah, I think Illinois' last game was, uh, even though they lost to Nebraska, was I think their first game that they won the turnover battle in, which is something, I mean, you know, normally when you look at these teams that, that feels like the sky is falling a little bit, you can look at their turnover luck, but... Um, that's not a fluke that Illinois is losing the turnover battle as much as it is, but uh, maybe a little bit of, of positive momentum in that regard. But yeah, I mean, Maryland's defense, um, we've talked about a ton. They've been sensational this year. This is a big opportunity for them to keep that going into the bye week, stay healthy, whatever it may be. Um, nothing's easy in the Big Ten, but this is definitely the kind of game where you know, you're know you expecting Maryland's defense to, to command it a bit. And if Illinois is able to move the ball a lot, um, that would be a little bit concerning. 
But let, let's flip to, to Illinois' defense. Like I like I mentioned, they they had some studs last year. They were a really, really good, really stout defensive team, especially in that secondary. They had multiple NFL draft picks. But this year, not as much. They have, I mean, th- this isn't just the secondary, but they have eight sacks in six games, which is bottom 20, I think, in the country. Um, their secondary, well, this is this is a little bit surprising. They play the second most man coverage of any team in the country besides Purdue, which is certainly interesting considering how young their secondary is that they're willing to, you know, put them out there like that. Um, but, but potentially uh, the kind of matchup that you could see Maryland's offense, especially it's passing attack, taking advantage of. And, you know, we know how good Maryland's receivers have been this year. We know that Talia has been overall very, very good this year. Could be a big opportunity for them to put up points through the air. Yeah. And, and I, you, you know, you mentioned the sacks and the lack of playmaking that Illinois defense has had and that kind of just across the board, right. It's, it's their second to last in, in sacks in the conference, second to last interception. They only have four interceptions on the season while they've thrown eight. So that that turnover differential is just it's it's not good enough to win games in the Big Ten. They're bottom they're bottom in in in, in yards allowed, yards per game. So this is a defense that's really struggling to recuperate after the losses of some years. And after a game where, you know, Talia Tagaloa and Merrill's offense. You know, obviously they're they're gonna think about a lot of the mistakes they made. This is a game where you can kind of take out that frustration, if you will, and kind of put up a lot of points because in Illinois' past few games, they've they've allowed a, a fair amount of points. Uh, a Nebraska offense, which is not good, uh, to put it lightly, you know, was able to put up a few scores. Purdue put up forty four points on them. So this is kind of lining up, and anything can happen in the Big Ten. We 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 see we've seen that for years and years now, but Maryland's offense definitely has an opportunity here to put up a big number. Yeah. I mean, perhaps it's a little bit overblown, but the, the biggest equalizer that I could see is maybe the weather might be bad weather on Saturday. It might be rainy. I've been reading up a lot about that. People are there. There there are people who genuinely, and I got, I don't, I I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, It might be true. Talia has struggled in the elements before. Not to, I know, I know, I interrupted you, but um, but I know Talia has struggled in the elements beforehand. But I'm just not sure when two teams are kind of in the opposite direction right now. I'm I'm not sure how much at home the uh, the weather can kind of equal the competition. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure that it's you know gonna make it equal enough that Maryland will lose this game because you know we'll we'll give score predictions in a minute, but. You know, I think Maryland's going to win this game. Just maybe, you know, it could slow down their passing attack. Maybe, maybe take a minute for them to get comfortable in it. Could be a little bit of a help to a uh, to a Purdue secondary that is a bit unproven. Which is, you know, I mean, excuse me, I said Purdue, Illinois secondary. Um, I, I was thinking about that man coverage stat. I was saying, um, but yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely could be something to keep an eye on. But I think oftentimes the elements are a little bit overblown because both teams have to play in it anyway, and it's not like Purdue. Uh, I need to stop saying Purdue. Not like Illinois is uh is, is such a great running team either. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see with that. Um, do you have anything to add before we give score predictions? Well, no, I would say the one thing I, I would say if the weather actually does come into play, Maryland's rushing attack needs to be a lot better. It's it's struggled for a few games now, and this is a game where the rushing attack needs to get going because Roman Hemby, I think in his past three games combined, he's under a hundred yards, and just as a whole, the rushing attack has, has, has really bottomed out and to win in the big 10 and as bigger games on the schedule come, it's something that they're going to need to you know, get momentum riding with. Yeah. I mean, we've talked so much about this team kind of going as far as Talia Tungvaloa takes it, but like, yeah, like you said, like this rushing attack has been a lot yeah. less potent that we've been, than we, than we were used to last year. Um, yeah. and, and it feels like the big thing that's been missing for me, at least has been the big plays. Um, mm-hmm. I know that they, there's a big emphasis on explosive plays and, and kind of winning the explosive play battle. feels yeah. like Maryland's rushing attack. I mean, I can't even remember the last time they had a rush over like 30 yards. They That's had here to, to put it right, into perspective. It? Uh, well, I, I, I know just off the top of my head from, from writing about it way too often was against Ohio State, they, they had only one rush in the entire game of over 10 yards, and it was a 17-yard rush. And that was through the entire game. And it was only two, I believe, um, in the Indiana game. So, yeah. Yeah, not... it's, been, it's been a minute. But yeah. I, I remember, like, last year. And, you know, last year is last year. Like, I know we're, this is this is the Different seventh team. game of the season. So maybe maybe yeah. I shouldn't be bringing up last year as much as I do. But, like, 
could be we're talking about the same personnel here, at least in the running back room. I mean, the offensive line is totally different, but you know, Roman Hemby would break off 50 yard runs every other week. We have not seen that yet this year. I know he was talking about nursing and some sort of injury earlier. Um, who knows if that's still bothering him or not. This bye week that's coming up maybe could help him with that. But yeah, I mean, this offensive line looks to be a lot better in pass blocking than run blocking, which I guess we're just starting to figure that out. I mean, it was kind of the the opposite last year, it felt like. Um, and there there could be a little bit of movement on the offensive line. We saw some injuries in the Ohio State yes. game that we're not totally sure about. Yeah. We should probably address the injuries yeah. that, that we that we saw in the Ohio State game. I mean, Tarheeb still did not play on defense, did not see him at practice this week, which is weird because he was made available before the Ohio State game to the media, which is generally you would rarely ever see them do that to someone that they didn't think was going to play 100%. Um, but maybe maybe a little bit of mind games there. Um, and then we saw Corey Bullock go yes. out with an injury. Um, and who was the other? There was another offensive lineman that I believe left the game with an injury. Uh, but we saw well, some. We saw Andre Roy come in at right tackle. Yeah. Um, we well, saw a little well, bit so, of shifting on the O line. Well, the thing with the yeah with the offensive line, you mentioned the shifting. I think that's the biggest thing, right? With injuries in some other positions. I don't want to say you can deal with them, but it's it's not it doesn't you don't feel it as much when when one player on the offensive line like Cordy Bullock, who's been a staple all season long, goes down, the entire line has to shift. And kind of after he went out, the offensive line looked really poor in that last quarter against Ohio State for Maryland. I think I think Kyle Long especially I think allowed I think five hurries in the in in in, in the last. 20 minutes alone. So the offensive line needs to get healthy towards the final stretch of the season because we know they don't have a lot of depth there. That was a major discussion headed into the season. So I think that that for me, I think is the biggest thing to keep an eye on. Yeah, I'm not sure Andre Roy is quite there yet where I would yeah. trust him at right tackle, but I do like Gotti at, at right guard more than mm-hmm. right tackle, maybe. I think that, you know, on the outside maybe didn't look as comfortable as we thought he would. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe maybe a little bit of a silver lining there, but but we'll see. Um, Andrew, do you want to give a score prediction for this game? Yeah, um, I will go 37 to 14, Maryland. All right. So, uh, so that's a, that's a narrow cover for Illinois. I'll, I'll say, I'll say the Terps cover the, the 14 point spread. I'll say that Maryland wins this game 31 to 10. I think Illinois offense is just really bad. Maryland's defense looks very good. Um, and I, I trust Maryland to move the ball, especially through the air against the secondary. Um, I think it's a perfect matchup for Maryland after that Ohio State game to get its confidence back, to uh, you know, maybe maybe work out some of the kinks that that we saw some of those mistakes. Um, a good opportunity against a team that hasn't been too opportunistic in terms of turning the ball over and such. So uh so I see Maryland winning this game pretty comfortably on homecoming, which maybe isn't as big of an event on Maryland's campus as it is in some places, but uh but but still cool to see uh Maryland potentially getting bowl eligible in week seven before the bye week, which is just, um, I mean, I know that Ohio state lost, you know, the stings for a bit, but, but, but what a great start to the season this has been for Maryland football. Um, Maryland basketball season is less than a month away. And we got, uh, some preseason polls coming out. We got, we got the big 10 poll. Um, we got the, well, we got the unofficial big 10 poll because for some reason the big 10 doesn't do a media poll anymore. I have no idea why. Um, and then there was like a, a conference, all conference team something. I'm not really sure what that was about. There was one team and it had like 10 people on it, which I mean, cue the John Rothstein, whatever his Rothsteinism is for, you know, unfathomable 10 people on one team. Um, but the news is Maryland, Maryland was picked third um, behind unexpectedly Purdue and Michigan state at the top. Uh, does that seem right to you? Maryland yeah. to be third. In yeah. The Big Ten I, this yeah. Year? I, I think that poll could have been done five months ago. And I think, it, I think everyone kind of, kind of would have said, Almost, I think there's a third and fourth, maybe discussion there. But I think for the most part, I think I it's voted fourth personally. Behind Wisco, behind Illinois. Oh. But and I don't know why I keep buying. The, you know, in retrospect, like, yeah, uh, how many times have we believed in Illinois with the athleticism and whatever? I mean, I know they had the one year where they won the Big Ten, but well, they'll start off ranked in the in the, in the top fifteen, then then go down. They come back in, and then next thing you know, it's like always an enigma, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. Love their fans though. I think their fans, Illinois fans, in my opinion, are the most Maryland similar, the most similar fan base in basketball to Maryland, maybe maybe in the Big well, Ten. What do you mean by that? I mean in like the sense that they had like, and you know, don't get mad at me, Maryland fans, but they had like their best team like 
20 years ago and and you yeah. know the the, mm. the demand is to be mm. national champions every year and mm. it's never good enough um mm. and yeah. and Brad Underwood you know more success than Mark Turgeon but not that much more success in March if we're being honest so yeah. you know he's no he's no Izzo or I was about to say Matt Painter even though he's a notorious <laughs> not getting the job done in March but still a, an amazing coach I can be a better coach in March than, than Matt Painter. Uh, moving on. Um, so uh, polls, Julian Reese and Jameer Young, both named to the preseason all Big Ten team. I don't think there's much surprise there. I think well, Jameer was a consensus, right? He was he was he was a consensus vote. Uh I assume so. Um okay. yeah, he was he or was unanimous voted... by consensus, whatever the, the terminology is. Yeah, unanim- unanimous, I guess. Yeah. Um and he he was also on the first team. Um, in the the other media poll where they they split them between the two, um, he was on the first team there. Julian Reese was not on either of the teams, but I think he was like the second most votes among players yeah, that weren't. So, yeah. um, he's kind of right on the edge there. But but yeah, no, like you said, no surprise to see those two guys there. Those are probably Maryland's two best players coming into this season, at least the two with the most national hype. I would say. Do we do we do we now want to overreact to the comments Kevin Willer made at uh, at Big Ten Media Day about? About that freshman about, class, that freshman. I mean, I don't know if we can overreact until we see him play, but it's uh, true. but yeah, I mean, he says it's the best freshman class he's ever had. Um, which is you know, it was a great recruiting class. Great you know, class. He's got he's got some studs in that class, and we're very excited to, he's uh, got to some see beats. them. We got we got yeah. media day coming up uh next week, so maybe maybe we'll we'll hit a little basketball yeah. podcast next week, next Tuesday. Yeah, so exciting, but uh, but yeah, I mean, Deshaun Harris Smith and Jamie Kaiser are two of the best freshman in the conference. Yeah. Um, Deshaun Harris Smith finished second behind Mackenzie and Baco for preseason yeah. big 10 freshman of the year, which is probably about where he should be. Um, he'll push for that award. I mean, he is a great player. Um, both those guys might start this year. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, no surprise to hear him saying that. I mean, he was saying that back on signing day, he was saying, I think Deshaun's the best recruit I've ever gotten. Um, yeah. he's probably right. At least as a stands now, we haven't seen him play a game in college yet, but, uh, but yeah, th- those two guys are great. Um, and you know, John Lamoth and Braden Pierce probably yeah. aren't going to play huge roles on this team, but m- m- maybe mm-hmm. moving forward, we'll see. You know, and I, I think I think the, the exact quote or paraphrasing a little bit was Deshaun is the is, is the, the the might be the most talented player I've I've ever had, or was, was something about like he's the most physically gifted player yeah. um ever gotten. Yeah, I mean, dude, that guy just has a motor. Like he, he just, he's relentless and, and, you know, the season starts in in less than a month. So, so we'll see it against, you know, college competition, but, uh, but I'm expecting a big year from him. Speaking of physicality, uh, it also seemed like, like Willard loved his, how physical this is. His teams teams were, uh, I think, you know, he said, I have to cut my, my practice short because they're, they're, they're they're too physical. Yeah, man, (laughs) you gotta love it. Right. I mean, that's Kevin Willard basketball for you. You know, he loves that that physical, you know, defense oriented style of basketball. You know, this team, like he said, he said like last year I had a team that played in the Big Ten. This year I have a Big Ten team. Yeah. Like, you know, last year size was a bit of a problem. Julian Reese alleviated that a little bit with his play down the down the stretch, but you know, he's he's still not like one of those huge guys. And, you know, you bring in Matty Triore, um, who's super athletic, you know, we'll we'll, mm-hmm. we'll see what he brings to the table. Um, but same with, least... the guy like, same with the guy like Jordan Geronimo, though, big wingspan athletic as well. Yeah. I mean... gonna, Will's going to have a lot of different lineups as, as disposable. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how he kind of throw, throws those out to start the season. Um, yeah. I mean, like, you, especially you, in the front court, I think I'm very, yeah. You have, you have a scenario where, I mean, you could have, you could have a huge lineup. I mean, you could have, yeah. um, I mean, you could have Matty Triore in there where, you know, he's approaching seven feet at the yeah. five. You could have Julian Reese at the four. Six mm-hmm. nine, six ten. Dante Scott, Jordan Geronimo. I mean, Deshaun Harris Smith is a big guy. Jamie Kaiser's like six six, six seven. Like, I mean, th- this is going to be a, a very physically gifted team. We're going to see what they they put it all together on the court, uh, how that works. But, um, but third in the to be picked third in the Big Ten. You know, with the two teams that you have ahead of you that are preseason top ten teams. I mean, you know, the, this this team could be really good. We, and the AP poll will probably come out next week. Um, I would expect Maryland to be right on right around that 25 yeah. range. If they're not in it, they'll be right outside of it. Um, so yeah, it should be a fun season. And it's certainly interesting to see how they play. I'll say this: I, I don't know about the exact success. I think they're going to be. A, I think the way that they're kind of set up to play, I think they're going to be a very enter- entertaining team to watch from a neutral. Um, whether that translates to 
the success they had last year or doing more than that is is to be seen. But either way, it should be a really, really fun team and a, and, and a fun season. Yeah, and w- like I said, maybe maybe we'll hit a a basketball media day podcast next yeah. week and kind of go a little bit more in depth what we see from practice and such. But uh, but I think that's all. Before we go, we you know we gave our football score predictions. We talked a little basketball. Is there anything else you think we need to talk about before before we head out this week? No, I don't. I don't think so. Perfect. Well, thank you all for listening. As always, uh, we'll be back after the game against Illinois, the football game against Illinois this Saturday night. Um, or at least we'll be back Saturday night. The game's at 3.30 on NBC, another nationally televised game for Maryland football. Um, And yeah, looking forward to it. See you all then.